Brahmana and Vaishnava. The conclusive comparison between Brahmanas and Vaishnavas. Sri Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. Translated by Bhumi Pati Das. Continuation 23. We find it written that there are only twelve Harijans in the four Yugas Satya, Treta, Dwapar, and Kali. Does this mean that the Harijans have given up Vaishnavism to serve the materialistic Prakriti Janas? Is this the conclusion of the Shastras? Every living entity is constitutionally a servant of Krishna or a Harijan. The living entity is bound by the ropes of Maya in proportion to his forgetfulness of his identity as the servant of Krishna. He then identifies himself as a smarta. Mundane foolishness is greatly diminished for one who realizes that an unalloyed Harijan is worshipable throughout the three worlds and is non-different from Hari as his servant. By his sweet will, the Supreme Lord often sends his associates into this material world in order to treat the conditioned souls. This is one of the Lord's tests. In order to spread his glories, to show how exclusively devoted to his service certain Harijans are, and to bring other Harijans back to his abode, the Supreme Enjoyer of transcendental pastimes, sends his own associate or associates into this material world as his, quote, devotee incarnations, end quote. The actual facts are distorted if such personalities are counted among those who have become perfect by regulated practice. Those Harijans who appear within this world as bhakta avatars before, during, or after the appearance of the Lord are not in the category of sadhana siddha devotees. And those Harijans who are followers of the twelve perfect devotees are counted among the sadhana siddha devotees. While studying the history of the Sri Sampradaya, we came to know that twelve perfect associates of the Lord appear at different times in this world from Vaikuntha in order to benefit the living entities. Also from authoritative Gaudiya texts such as Shri Gaur Ganadeshti Pika, we can learn of the identities of the Lord and his associates of Goloka and Vaikuntha. Also from authoritative Gaudiya texts such as Shri Gaur Ganadeshti Pika, we can learn of the identities the Lord and his associates of Goloka and Vaikuntha assume in Gorlila. When a living entity achieves perfection by worshipping Hari and realizes his perfect and uncontaminated status as a servant of Krishna, he then discovers his own eternal identity and the Lord becomes constantly manifest to him. Persons who are averse to the Harijans, however, can never understand this fact. The activities and symptoms of Vaishnavas are completely beyond the understanding of persons with material intelligence. During the four yugas, innumerable Harijans have honestly worshipped the Supreme Lord, showing a perfect example in their lives. By the hostile, counteractive measures of the Smartas, they were neither broken-hearted, discouraged, nor induced to give up their position as Harijans. Those who are unfortunate and less intelligent become bound by the results of pious and impious activities and create enmity with the Harijans. The Vaishnav Manjusa quotes the following from the Prapanamrita, Chapter 74. There are several Sanskrit verses here. The history of these associates of the Lord in the Sri Sampradaya are described in Sanskrit language in the two books Divya Suri Charita and 
Prapanamrita. In the Mani Pravala language, which is a mixture of Sanskrit and Tamil. In the books Gor Parama Parai Prabhava, Prabandasara, Upadesh Ratnamalai, and in the Dravidian Tamil language, in the book Pada Nadai Vilakam. 1. Kasaramuni, or Sarayogi. Prayag e Alvar. 2. Bhuta Yogi, Pudatta Alvar, who was an incarnation of the Lord's Kaj. 3. Branta Yogi, or Mahad Pe Alvar. 4. Bhakti Sar. Tiruma Desai Piran Alvar 5. Satari, also known as Sata Kopa, Paran Kusha, and Bakula Barana, Nama Alvar 6. Kula Shekar, Kula Shekara Alvar, who was an incarnation of the Kastuba gem. 7. Vishnu Chita, Peri Alvar, who was an incarnation of Garuda. 8. Bhaktan Rirenu, Tondara Dipadi Alvar. 9. Munivaha, also known as Yogivaha and Prananat Tirupani Alvar, who was an incarnation of Srivatsa. 10. Chatukavi, or Parikal, Tirumanga e Alvar, who was an incarnation of the Lord's bow. 11. Goda, Andal, who was an incarnation of Nila Lakshmi. 12. Ramanuja, Yambaru Manar, Uda Iyavar, Eli Alvar, who was an incarnation of Lakshman. And 13. Madhu Kavi. Madhu Kavigal Alvar. It is not that only South Indian devotees have come from Vaikuntha. If we look at the pastimes of the pure devotees of Bengal, we will realize that they are also eternal Harijans. We will now quote a few examples from the Gore. Ganodesha, Ramanuja Charita, and Madhva Charita. Those who have attained perfection in their bhajan have realized their own constitutional position. But nowadays, in the Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya, some immature Pancharatrika Mantra traders are presenting imaginary material names and forms as the goal of life and the path of perfection. Siddha Pranali. In this way, they gratify the minds of their disciples as well as disclose their own foolishness and ignorance of the Vaishnava literatures. We are not talking about these persons. The realizations of those who came to know their constitutional position by the strength of the authentic worship of Hari, Hari Bhajan, were often written down by their disciples in various parts of India at various times. We do not wish to speak further on this subject, yet it is also true that universally honored persons like Sri Madhvacharya, the incarnation of Vayu, Bhima or Hanuman, Sri Mamanuja, the incarnation of Shankarshan, and Gaudiya Vaishnavas like Prabhuva Sri Rupa Goswami, Prabhuva Sri Sanatan Goswami, Prabhuva Sri Raghunath Goswami, Prabhu Sri Naratam Das Tukur, Sri Shamananda Prabhu, Prabhu Sri Narahari Shakara Thakur, Ishvari Sri Srimati Janavi Devi, and others, as well as Sripad Vishwanath Chakravati Prabhu, 
Sripad Balade Vijabhusan Prabhu, various Sripad Siddha Babaji Prabhus, Prabhuva Sri Srimad Bhaktivinod Thakur, and Sripad Paramahamsa Sri Sri Vishnupad Sri Sri Gor Kishore Das Prabhuva, never perform devotional service with the mentality of mortal living beings fall in the pit of smart attitudes. These personalities had all realized their individual spiritual identities and being fixed in pure devotional service. They revealed the transcendental nature of their bhajan. Mortal beings who do not understand the Bhagavat or the Pancharatriki paths, who are imperfect, expert in the false egoism of material birth and so on, and desirous of taking the post of acharya for the sake of money, can never become Harijans. They are all non-devotees. Their acting as family gurus is just like the mundane activities of weavers, potters, blacksmiths, cobblers, shopkeepers, reciters, singers, and drummers. But this is completely different from the transcendental faith of the Vaishnavas. Since we are shoe carriers for the Harijans, we also agree with this description. The Harijans are divided into five types according to their taking shelter of each of the five primary rasas, Santa, Dasya, Sakya, Vatsalya, and Madurya. There is a further division into two categories. If one takes shelter of regulative devotional service, which is predominated by appreciation of the Lord's opulences on the strength of the injunctions of scriptures and the spiritual master, that is called Vitamarg. And if one follows according to one's own taste as a particular resident of Raj and accepts devotional service as his constitutional engagement, it is called Ragamarg. This is explained in the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Majilila, chapter 24, as follows. Translation There are two types of Atmaramas. One is engaged in regulative devotional service, and the other is engaged in spontaneous devotional service. The Atmaramas engaged in regulative and spontaneous devotional service are further categorized into four groups. There are the eternal associates, the associates who have become perfect by devotional service, and those who are engaged in devotional service and are called sadhaka. Those who are practicing devotional service are either mature or immature. Therefore, the sadhakas are of two types. Since the devotees execute either regulative devotional service or spontaneous devotional service, and there are four groups within these two divisions, altogether there are eight varieties. By executing regulative devotional service, one is elevated to the platform of an eternally perfect associate, such as servant, friend, superior, or beloved woman. These are of four varieties. Among those who have perfected themselves by devotional service, there are servants, friends, superiors, and beloved damsels. Similarly, there are four types of mature devotees. Within the category of regulative devotional service, there are also immature devotees. These are also of four varieties. Thus, in regulative devotional service, there are altogether 16 varieties. On the path of spontaneous devotional service, there are also 16 categories of devotees. Thus, there are 32 types of Atmaramas enjoying the Supreme Lord on these two paths. End translation. <laughs> 